just thought to take a little time out to thank the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for season six. Thank you. Who would have thought a podcast could be a gift? Really? That pressing B could spiritually uplift and simultaneously give a Pharisee fits. <laughs> all in all, you're the one controlling it. So, the Lord is my shepherd. I can't go skit. So, this new pot life is like a skit, though. A lot of people swinging. I didn't even throw a pitch, though. Uh, forehead is flint, what I'm a flinch for? Nothing. We all gon' repent for what we did, so I'ma keep it moving. Ain't no stripper or no cussing gonna ruin what we doing. We are dwelling in communion. Assignment is different. Dwellers get the sentiment. Vulnerability's my superpower. How many feeling it? Thank you, Lord, for this influence. Without you, in flinch just don't make sense. Nah. Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tim Ross. It is Monday, 4.14 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, don't rub your eyes. Don't <laughs> pinch your skin. Don't lick and bust off a shot into the air. We are live. This is not Memorex. <laughs> this is not a premiere. Check your local listings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are live right now, right this minute. <laughs> if you're in the chat right now, I want you to shout out where you're from. And I promise you, I'm going to read it off real time so you know that we're live. Don't start asking questions now. <laughs> Calm down for a minute, okay? It was the 50 questions that I wanted to ask. Yeah, don't don't be asking the questions right this minute. But where you at? Where you at? Lincoln, Nebraska, let's go. Jonesboro, Arkansas, Justin Thomas, let's go. Oh, y'all popping. Pensacola, okay, it's going too fast. Oh Baton Rouge, <laughs> Zimbabwe, Riley. Yo, y'all go. Hey, calm down. Huntsville, Alabama. Cleveland. Oh, snap. Oh, Harrisburg, PA. Hey. Uh, Baltimore, Charlotte, Anderson, New Jersey, Birmingham, Florida. Atlanta, Orlando, London, Vacaville, Vacaville, California, Dallas, Houston, Louis, uh, San Jose, uh, Orange County. I don't read this fast. This is like a this is like the teleprompter from hell. <laughs> Memphis, Atlanta, Texas, uh, Seattle, Washington, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Tucson, Tucson, North Carolina. Let's go, Houston, Texas, Trinidad and Tobago, West Covina, where the grass is hey! greener. Let's go, Roman Harrow. Yeah, bro, Resco Vina, let's go, bro. That's where I'm from. Let's get it. Finland, College Station, Sudan, what? Kansas City, Missouri, KCMO. All right, Charles Jr., I love you, bro. Galveston, New Orleans, Philly, the Netherlands, Jamaica, let's go. Fairfield, Indiana, Claire, Cleveland, Claire, Cleveland. Oklahoma, Hawkins, Texas. I don't even know where Hawkins is, but I know it's in Texas because Texas, Dripping Springs, Texas. I didn't know there was a Dripping Springs, Texas. Don't sound right. <laughs> it don't sound right. You can't sexualize everything. Praise God. <laughs> Naperville, OKC, Maryland, Lakeland, Denver, New Jersey. It's alive, Caitlin. Widner, it's alive, baby. We live, Caitlin. <laughs> Philly. Mojave, Torrance, Cape Town. Let's go. Let's go. I'm with it. Great Britain's in the building. New Rochelle, New York. Puerto Rico's in the house. Uh, Bayamon. Bayamon. I think I said that right, Swordmaster. Bayamon. Courtney says she didn't know that we were going live. Wow. It's all good. Nobody knew we were Nobody going live. Nobody we were going live. Nobody knew we were going live. Virginia Beach, West Virginia, Romania. Let's go. A la Katoy. Or, yeah, I hope it's Katoy. South London's in the house. What's up, Anthony? I'm glad you're here, man. Montgomery, Alabama. Miami, by way of Jamaica. Zimbabwe and Tim's house? I don't know what that <laughs> Tina, what do you mean by that? Zimbabwe in Tim's house. Let's go. 
Let's go. I love y'all so much. We up in here. Love it. I love it. <laughs> Should we go live every Monday? <laughs> Let us know your thoughts, dwellers. Should we go live every Monday? Is it a hell no, 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 or are we going yes for the Lord? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're doing a yes. <laughs> Portland, Buffalo, Holland. I love y'all so much. Marino Valley, Moval. Let's go. I love the Inland Empire. Let's go. North Richland Hills. <laughs> Come on, Joe Maldonado. We see you. Eliana, <laughs> you're so cute. North Richland Hills, baby. I mean, you represent, girl. H2O. NRH, Kentucky, all caps. Kenya. Kenya's in the building. Come on. Yeah, let's go, Enoch. Enoch was my, uh, Enoch, that's my, that's my grandfather's first name. His first name was Enoch, Enoch Elijah Ross Jr., which means my great-grandfather's name is Enoch as well. So shout out, Enoch. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. This is a solo, Greenwood, South Carolina. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I love you guys so much. We alive, bro. And uh, we do have a, a percentage review on Nope, LOL. 6% people have uh, declared that they do not want a live every Monday. 6%. Wow. They're actively engaged on a live on a Monday saying that they don't <laughs> want a live every Monday. Yeah, not every Monday. So maybe we get context. We ask where they're at in life. Oh, it's gone down to it's gone down to five percent. <laughs> Can you go back and change your poll? I didn't know you could do that. Is that a thing? That's really hilarious. Hey, we wanted to surprise you. I literally, I did I text y'all last night or this morning? It was last night. I it was late last I night. I text. Okay, <laughs> three a.m. Damn, Sam. How do you feel about it, Sam? Hell, <laughs> late. Did I? Did I had to get out of bed. <laughs> did I unpack my computer? He was pissed. He was playing Rocket League, and then Tim's like, "Hey, let's go live. The dwellers want to go live." Oh, I gotta get my slippers on, put on pants. And I pack my computer up. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh man, uh, it, yeah. So last night I was thinking about y'all. I was thinking about y'all. Was thinking about the community, the dweller community, and I thought. Man, you know, man, what if we went live on Monday? What if we just went live unannounced, like no social media, no no YouTube, no like, is anybody going to be on? Like just, <laughs> what if we just popped on and everybody that has not only clicked and subscribed, but they got their notifications on. And Tim, I don't find you as a desperate person. Please join. Will you oh join? Gosh, no. You're just like, I'm going live. I'm going you live. Can come hang out if you'd like. Yeah. Whoever can whoever can be up in here, cool. Whoever can't be up in here, it'll be on later for somebody to enjoy. You know what I mean? But I just wanted to I just wanted to like engage real time, you know, with some people and and um and just vibe out. We've had a great day of production. Um, and so this is coming at the end of a great day of production and, uh, we had a great guest, uh, that I cannot wait for y'all to, uh, listen to. And, uh, then we did a solo that we, um, recorded and I think that one's going to be fire as well. That was that about hour 15, hour 15. Hour 15 yep. So, uh, so that when those come out, it's going to be fire. Um, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to do a live and just, say what's up to everybody and um i guess this would just be a bonus for the week you know what i'm saying because they're getting three episodes this they, week yeah they're getting yeah everybody would get three episodes this week which mm -hmm. might be overkill yeah, they might be like i cannot i'm not listening to three you know um they're god's kids though but whenever you know put it in your library you know take a road trip mm -hmm. put one of these on yeah and mind your business how about that <laughs> how about we all mind our business hey everyone um, wants to know where they can buy a bobblehead of you by the way Okay, so <laughs> uh, let me get this. So uh, in a pod that has not been released yet, Facts. Um, I was presented with this gift for my 24th anniversary to the finest woman that has ever breathed on this planet, mm -hmm. Juliet Ross. And she got me a bobblehead. And what I... You know, Juliet is big on um, uh, individualization. So when it comes to gift giving, um, there is a whole little deal. And so that's legit my hat. The, 
Those are the headphones. Those are definitely my glasses. The beard. And that's a basement sweater, which I do actually have that hoodie. Those are my blue jeans, which I have. Those are my Nikes, which I have. This blue chair is actually the chair that's right over there. It's the chair that I used to sit in mm -hmm. when we were when we would tape over there. And um, yeah, she recreated this for me. And she she got with like a little sculptor and went through like she probably gave the sculptor fits because the attention to detail on this thing, she was like he would send renderings and she would be like, no, the glasses have to look like this and the beard has to look like this. And I cut his hair and it doesn't look like that. When he puts on his hat, this is how it comes out of his his hair it sticks out uh, on top of the and so it's so cute yo this is so authentic it's so cute bro it's so it's so authentic look at that you can't make that up look at that you cannot make that up so yeah so it's not for sale we're not selling them that's weird i can't <laughs> little tims everywhere i can't have little tims bob bobbling around in in people's cars and stuff that's just a little weird so um yeah. Uh so yeah, so I'm so yeah, we just chilling. We are just chilling. We're vibing. We yeah. had a great production day. Yeah, yeah. It was. All of that was good. And so listen, I'm I'm just here with y'all right now. Like we ain't even we ain't in here in a live chat with fifteen hundred people and it's it's about two hundred and something of us in here. Oh my bad. Three eighty two. Oh, maybe maybe yeah. my screen hasn't refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> uh maybe i should back out and come back nah, in they, they, how about they're piling that? in and right. we have any dwellers in miami let's just say it's going down this week dwellers and the in whole miami. crew the whole crew's coming through y'all they're getting four episodes this week <laughs> oh literally <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> oh my goodness yeah yeah so so yeah they are mm -hmm. yo if you haven't if you well you can't get tickets anymore oh i'm so sorry they're sold out i hope you're coming to vucon if I see you at VUCON, I'm giving you a big hug. And um, also, uh, if you were one of those uh, fortunate people, we are doing our first basement live uh, in person uh, at the University of Miami on Thursday oh night my God. at 10 p.m. Even talking about it just gets me excited. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Yeah, Have yeah, you yeah. ever done, obviously you're in ministry for 26 plus years, yeah. but have you done anything remotely close to this, a real intimate, smaller event, something like that? Not, not that it's focused around like me. Mm. You know what I mean? I've been a part of some stuff like that, but never like we're doing a basement live and then it sells out in an hour or, but I don't even know how long it, it took, but like for it to be, for that to be a thing is unbelievable. So, um, it won't be live streamed. I don't think, mm -hmm. uh, but it will be, um, it will be amazing. Is it, is there anybody in here right now that, that is, uh, that's going to be there in Miami? Just shout us out. Let us know. Cause, I'm excited about it. Like I'm, I'm like this. This is gonna be it. This is gonna be. Oh my! I can't even imagine. Like to be with the dwellers live, fam. It's a whole milestone for us. Dude. It is. And I we mean, got we got to give a major mm -hmm. shout out to Rich's team. Oh, because dude. they made it. Everybody, easy. everybody yes. at Vu. Yeah. Everybody at Vu. Hey, hey dude. So when we were just talking about the concept of the basement yep uh we hadn't started recording yet yep me and this dude got together in a hotel room in south lake in south lake and we were talking about let's just dream and so like one of the things that we came up with while we were dreaming about this thing was dude what if we did like a basement tour and like we did live shows and we had an audience so this is like a whole fruition it is that was a year ago bro of it a was. dream wow we were dreaming about it we were already excited about it and for the lord to do it on the same month it's it's ridiculous it's very yeah no it's very sweet mm -hmm. it actually is very sweet because what god has done in a year is um exceedingly abundantly above anything we could have asked or thought so that's awesome 
And, you know, to, just to interact with the dwellers live, mm-hmm. it's just, I think it's special because our, what we do and the way we do it is very, very unique. You, you know what I mean? Like the, these are people that are emotionally intelligent. These these are people that uh, have a hunger for discipleship. They're, they're ready to grow. You know what I mean? They're like really committed and, and, and strong and have incredible values. So, I'm I'm uh I'm really excited. So if you if you got a ticket and you're gonna be there, I can't wait to hug your neck. If you don't have a ticket and you're not gonna be there, it's all good. It's all good. This is proof of concept. We're gonna do it again. You know, maybe next year we'll go. We'll like go on the road. Maybe we'll have four months out of the year that we actually tour. You know, we're gonna get a little like RV. And no, the whole squad. No, sir. The, the smallest alive. RV we can get. No, we're not doing. Tim, that. come on, bro. You know we will be so a minivan. Cute. We will be so cute in that thing, bro. Little two thousand one Dodge Caravan. It's over, bro. Yeah, it is over. <laughs> it's it's bonding, bro. Th- th- this conversation's over. No, we're already bonded. Yeah, I'll, I'll meet y'all there. Yeah, because I'll be on that American Airlines flight <laughs> to whatever city we're going. Or, or Delta, because we like Delta now. I well, I. Now? Delta's customer service is better than American. American needs to step up. I got a million miles on American and Delta dusted you. Delta dusted you when they said first class <laughs> instead of group one. <laughs> now, I know that's that's like bougie traveler syndrome, but it's, <laughs> it's still a thing. I think everybody that works for Delta Airlines currently worked for two years at Chick-fil-A in their te- in their teenage years mm-hmm. cuz they're super sweet people. Mike Brown, thank you so much, bro, for the donation. I love you and I appreciate your support. Yeah, so um I love y'all. I just love being li- I, I'm never like like live with y'all where I could just read the comments as well. Not not since uh not since was it New Year's? Was New Year's our last live? Uh, yeah, January like twenty third, the ninth, the end of January is the last time we went live. So our dwellers have been pissed. <laughs> <laughs> They've been waiting for us. Yep, yep. All right. Um. So let me um. Let me answer this question from Mindy because Mindy's uh copied and pasted it several times. <laughs> uh, uh, she said, "Tim, asking for asking this for a friend." Uh, what if someone doesn't have as many obedience receipts like you do? Would God still want to bless them with favor or is it too late? Got any Bible for this? I don't know what that means, Mindy. Can you ask can you ask that question a different way? Would that be would it be difficult for you to ask that question a different way? Because I actually don't know what that means. Like obedience receipts. I don't know what that means. Uh, in my head, just speculating, is it like a relational equity type thing? Like you haven't done this enough for me to, you know, have back, trust. Yeah. Cause receipts, receipts are like proof of purchase, right? So yeah, obedience but, is like proof of obedience. Maybe. I don't know. That's, that, that's a good that, speculation. That's why I'm asking. Yes, sir. Cause I want clarity. Thank you, Mindy. I want clarity from Mindy. Um, we also got someone saying, uh, do you have any discipleship slots open? This is it. Yes, sir. This is your discipleship slot. <laughs> now, we do get that a lot in the chat and like in, in comments as, as well, like people wanting specifically like one on one. Can you talk a little bit more about like how this is that space for it? Yeah. So so um, at this point, there's literally thousands of people that want some personal one-on-one time i just want you to think about that if thousands of people want personal one-on-one time and we can't even get into the real crux of your narrative especially if it's our first time meeting without at least 90 minutes to two hours times how many people have made this request when am i going to have time with god when will i have time with juliet when will i have time with nathan and noah when will I be able to go see my mama and my daddy that live 20 minutes away? When would I be able to, you know what I mean? So, so I understand the desire that's there, but you know what I, my encouragement is that 
let this be something for you until until you can get the person with you that you need for this season of your life. And there's mentors all over the place. And uh, I will cover as much as I can here and hold space. And uh, my admonition, my encouragement, um, uh, my exhortation to you is to go find the person that is right around you. There is somebody with wisdom that that is waiting for you to pull on it. And they have the time and they have the bandwidth to be able to answer some questions, walk with you through life, hold you accountable, challenge you, inspire you, correct you, all that kind of stuff. So I hope that helps. Kamala Gibson McElroy, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love you so much. I'm so grateful that you're here. Um, I apologize. I'm not like scrolling back up or whatever. And, and some of this stuff is popping uh popping up like fast too. i got you a question um Ale okay alexis diaz is asking marriage is discussed often on the pod can you elaborate on how we should be in a relationship girlfriend boyfriend how much patience should we have how much work do we put into it and when do we call it quits read it again just the question part is yeah um can you elaborate on how we should be in a relationship as boyfriend and girlfriend? How much patience should we have? How much work do we put into it? And when do we call it quits? Oh, okay. Boyfriend, girlfriend. I, yes. I like. I, I heard marriage and I heard boyfriend, girlfriend. So They're saying since we talk about marriage. Okay, lot, got you, you, got you. Yeah. So, so here's what I would say. When it comes to when it comes to being a boyfriend and a girlfriend, first of all, how long have you all been dating? That's a, because what I have to say is really based on that, right? If you've been dating less than 90 days, okay, you're still getting to know each other. If you've been dating for a hundred and eighty days, I don't know why I'm doing days instead of <laughs> doing it like it's a like it's a car loan. Um, uh, uh, if you've been dating for six months, um, somebody should have stated their intentions already. Mm -hmm. Somebody should have said something. So, so, um, I'm looking for in the, in that, for the, for the relationship that has gone over 90 days, I'm looking for, do you know what you want in this relationship at this point? Do you know? Because again, after six months, you should know if you want to move to the next step of we're going to be exclusive. Are we talking marriage? Are we getting me? You know, I, I now if there's you know um, mitigating circ mitigating circumstances such as travel or it's a long distance relationship, then I can understand it can take a little bit longer to gain some relational equity. But listen, y'all, if y'all in the same city and y'all get together all the time and you hang out every weekend man after a hundred hours somebody should know something i i want to get married i want you to be my wife i want you to be my husband i'm really asking the lord to give us clarity I, we need to meet the parents you know what i mean we need to meet the grandparents you need to meet my homegirls you need to meet my homeboys like where is this relationship going yeah. like i i do not advise christian people to be in a boyfriend girlfriend relational status for a long time that's crazy i got a, a question to tag on to that tag it on how should somebody go about dating in general mm -hmm. i've noticed especially with people becoming really familiar with online dating mm -hmm. they might rack up three dates a week yeah maybe six bi-weekly i don't know mm-hmm what would you encourage that person to go about that properly? Or is that, is that a good idea in general? Well, listen, um, purity culture in the church has really jacked up a lot of people. So I'm, I want to say that as a disclaimer before Can I make it one more time louder, please. Purity culture <laughs> in the church has jacked up a lot of people. <laughs> and because it's jacked up so many people, I really think that, um, uh, when it comes to like the 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 like 
the accepting of resumes, as I so affectionately call it, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm single, which I'm never gonna be, because I'm gonna be married to Juliet till I die, <laughs> and I'm going first, okay? Um, uh, uh, but when I was single, I was accepting resumes, and you can only accept <laughs> resumes uh, for so long before you have to start interviewing the potential applicants, right? So going on a date, this is me trying to find out in the first round of interviews if I want to go out with you again. Yeah. And if I got three dates lined up in a week, I'm not a player. I'm fielding applications. Now, if I'm really looking to hire somebody, I have kind of a, a start date and an end date to the hiring process. I ain't going to be out here two years looking at applicants, right? I'm good looking. I'm going to find who I want in 30 days or less, right? And then I'm going to aggregate and be like, you know what? I'm going with, okay, I got I got 10. I'm Now I'm going to whittle it down to five, right? Because de depending on my budget, I can't date everybody, okay? Yeah. Everybody can't go get some steak, okay? <laughs> and some sea bass, so so let's just say I get down to five people and I'm going to go. I'm just telling you my formula. OK, if I if I was going to if I'm looking at five potential applicants, I'm probably going to over a 10 day period go out with these five different women. And I'm going to talk and they're going to talk and we're going to. I'm gonna see where chemistry is. I'm gonna see where everything is. I'm not kissing nobody on the on this first date. So no physical touch other than a hug. I'll hug them, but I'm not kissing nobody on the lips. Um, cause I'm I'm, I'm, I'm this is an interview. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not kissing you on the lips in an interview. This is an interview. You don't you ain't got the job, huh? You get my lips when you get this job, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so um. So so that would be that would be my thing. But 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 in my mind, why am I why am I dating? Why am I setting these up? Because I'm looking for potential mates. I'm not I'm not over here looking for man, I'm just out here good. I'm just living fancy free and I'm I'm just dating. I am not connected to nobody. So I'm going out with this hot girl and this hot girl and this hot no nah, nah, that's not going to happen. I'm going to I'm going to pick 5 and over 10 days I'm a date all five you know and then i'm gonna figure out who 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 makes the cut for a second date and i'm and it's not gonna be it ain't gonna be all five again some people gonna have to somebody gonna rise to the top <laughs> you know what i'm saying and on that second date we're not we're not gonna do dinner you know what i mean we're gonna do an activity see how we work together see how we work together we gonna bowl maybe not even work together work against each other Right, we gonna bowl, and are you super competitive? You know what I mean. Do you give a damn if you win or not? <laughs> you know what I mean. Are you? Let's just see how we let's see how we are in this type of setting, right? And so we'll do that. And then after that one, after that, if I got three dates like that, and 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 they all go well, then I need to pray. Now that's the scenario because that didn't happen with with Juliet. The Lord told me the first day I laid eyes on her that was my wife. So I was I was convinced. He he I ain't need to, <laughs> I ain't need nothing after that. So I was good. But I just I just I think I'm trying to just give a scenario of what this should look like for a guy or a girl. Let me say that too, because uh, so many times a man will say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I lined up a date with five girls over ten days," and but then if a girl does it, she a hoe. Mm. Oh. Mm. If a girl does it, oh my God, I can't believe you went out with that many dudes. Let me tell you something. Again, I rebuke the, pur the purity culture that has been in the church that has made girls literally smother their 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 God-given fem femininity. Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about the sexuality. Mm -hmm. The femininity, femininity of a woman good. should not be weaponized or threatened you're a woman you're beautiful it's the glory god gave you there's a reason why the woman was 
formed. The man was made. That man, d- dust. <laughs> yeah. That woman, bow. Bow. That's formation. Huh? Wow. Huh? I never thought about it like Bruh. that. Bruh. That man was made. That woman was formed. Bow. Bow. That formation was a... Ooh, that was creation on... That was creation's glory was the formation of that woman. God given. That man with a womb. Ooh. Okay, so, so that's beautiful. We celebrate that. Right. And a woman's femininity should not be smothered because she's a believer in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm. So good. Let's not sexualize this woman. Mm-hmm. She's trying to do the same thing the man's doing. So she lines up five dates. Well, she shouldn't be doing that. Whoso findeth the wife findeth the good thing. Well, how you, how you going to find me if I'm not out? Is the Amazon delivery guy supposed to be my husband? Because I'm, I'm in the house all day? Yeah. No, leave that girl alone. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you got to put yourself in a place to be found. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need to go out to the social. That way you can be found. Mm-hmm. <laughs> take a little walk on Katy Trail. Hey, take a little walk on Katy Trail. Take the pup out. Yeah, just, not, just don't take a walk around Trinity River. <laughs> it's different. The river smells. Okay. <laughs> You're going to pick up a smelly dude if you do that. So I'm just, I'm just, I, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Well, definitely coming from like someone who's grown up in the purity culture thing, the whole I kiss dating goodbye thing. Um, oh my God, dude. It, mm. it messed me up. One, there was so much perceived rejection. Yeah. Because it wasn't a like, are you my person? It was, hey, I like you. Do you like me? Well, they don't even know me, dude. Yeah. So I just bottled that up as rejection. Yeah. Learning how to date in 2023 is difficult. Oh, Lord. The it landscape is, is so crazy. Difficult. So d- online dating. Totally normal. Chill. Absolutely. It's everything. Else, they're doing everything else. On, like, you pay your bills online. Mm-hmm. You can't find a mate online. What's the problem? My only my, my, my only caution with online dating is make sure when you find the one, get offline. Hmm. Yeah. Delete that Snapchat. If you find them on, once you got them, get off. I remember, uh, I will never forget, before I got saved, I started dating this girl. I met this girl at this club. She was fine. Lord have mercy. She was so bad. And, um, like, instant chemistry. Right? And so, I'm an introvert. But I was at the club. Right? Wasn't married, (laughs) obviously. Wasn't saved. Obviously. And so I'm, you know, hanging out, chilling. We hit it off. Sparks fly, you know. And so uh, we start seeing each other a lot, right? I, I just fall head head over for this one. And um, crazy, crazy setup where uh, she lived with her dad. And she's like, when are you going to come spend a night? And I was like, you leverage your dad. Mm-hmm. And she was like, and? She was like, he's cool. And so I met him. Da, 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 da. Really cool dude. And she was like, come in the room. Oh. And, and, you know, so I go in the room and I'm like, is your daddy going to come in? Like, like I, <laughs> It was so disoriented. I had yeah. never yeah. dated a girl whose father was just down with it was down with it like that right it was very very weird very disorienting anyway long story short um like yeah we started kicking it and i spent the night at the house you know i remember the first night we got in bed and i was i was frozen all night (laughs) i just i'm like i think she's setting me up to be murdered by her father like you know i'm gonna die in my sleep i'm gonna wake up dead you know uh never happened uh but within i think a month and a half she broke up with me Mm. and you know why she broke up with me she was like you're no more fun you don't want to go to the club with me anymore Mm. and i was like i was at the club to get you we can leave now yeah i I don't need to go back for what 
right? I, and I wasn't saying she couldn't go to the club, but like I wanted to spend time with her. And so um, I learned a lot from that. I did. I learned a lot from that episode of my life. I was like, oh, that was that was interesting. She still wanted to. She saw it as a place to hang out and chill. I saw it as a place to hook up with somebody. Yep. And then I, I just happened to fall for her and just, I don't need to go back to the club. I don't need to see no yep. other girls in there. I want to hang with you. So what was your response when she cut it off? Okay. <laughs> Cause I, bro, before I got saved, so. <laughs> plenty fish in the sea, man. <laughs> plenty fish in the sea, man. So I didn't, I didn't have no, it was like, okay, cool, cool. I'll, I'll have another one. And I had an abandonment issues anyway, so I was going to have somebody within five days. So it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter to me back then. So Mindy revised her question if you want to hear that. Hit me with it. Um, Thank you, Simply. Simply Nakisha, thank you so much for your gift. I appreciate you. Love it. Um, Mindy says, can God still bless them with favor and make their dreams come true if if they haven't been obedient? Or wait, hold on. If they haven't been obedient a majority of their life, but they are now. Absolutely. Child, please. God ain't petty. Mindy, I'm so glad you asked that question. And I'm grateful. Thank you so much for clarifying it. Because I, I don't like answering questions based on assumptions. Right? If there's too many, if there's too much gray and I don't have clarity on it, I'd just rather not answer the question. So thank you for the clarity. <laughs> but let me just tell you. If you were disobedient the majority of your life and didn't obey God, and now you're in a season where you obey God and you're dialed in, God is not petty. Like, oh, 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 now you think I'm going to give you something? When for the last 37 years of your life, you didn't even worship me? He ain't a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. And he's not your cousin that should be petty. <laughs> and I don't even know if you have a petty cousin, but I'm just trying to bring it closer to home. God's not petty, Mindy. You're going to be fine, booby. You're going to be fine. If he, if he, if he said he's going to bless you, I bet you he bless you. I promise you he will. You ain't even got to worry about that. So, Because if that was the case, us three couldn't be doing this podcast. <laughs> no. We'd be long gone. We'd be playing Minecraft, doing reaction videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to advocate for us to play Minecraft together. <laughs> Minecraft is the ugly, one of the ugliest games I've ever seen in my entire Tim life. Tim Ross, we're going to pray purpose. right now. We're gonna play I'm, right I'm now. not. I'm not playing that game. That pixelated problem. <laughs> Ugh. It is. It it makes Lego look attractive. <laughs> oh, good lord! No, so no, no, no. This ties into uh, what we've been talking about. Musical Queen asks, uh, "What's what's a word of encouragement or discernment to the women of God in their late thirties, forties, fifties in singlehood when the church so heavily focuses on pouring into married women and getting them married?" Yeah, first of all, um, what's her name again? Musical Queen 716. Hey, Musical Queen 716, that all rhymes. You know what I mean? Musical Queen 716. Hey. It all rhymes, you know what I mean? I said the Musical Queen 716. It all rhymes, if you know what I mean. Hey, so first of all, I love you. Second, thank you for the question. Third, um... The church hasn't do, done a good job in empowering single people, period. Men or women. The, 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 the church has relegated single people to uh, the individuals who didn't get picked up by the first bus ride. And hopefully there's a second bus or third bus it's really sad, man. And and um even like even in our best attempts, the best attempts that I've seen single people try to be, uh, churches try to like appeal to single people, it just feels like a stigma. You know what I mean? We have a singles ministry. What are you saying? Like like you know you know who I feel uh very uh i have a lot of compassion for those in their 20s because there's this presupposition that's been left over from like world war ii that 
if you ain't married by like 22 years old, what are you doing with your whole life? Right. Because everybody back in that generation was getting married between 18 and 22 years old and then having babies until nature said stop. Right. Like birth control wasn't a thing uh, like it is now. And so, um, yeah, that that's that's very, very frustrating. What I would say is um, to all single people, male and male and female, men and women, is. When you are satisfied with the purpose and plan of God in your life as you know it right now, um, you can thrive in any season that you're in. I I, I have um, several friends who uh, have have a desire to be married. They in Dubai. They got doctorate degrees. They own homes. They own businesses. They drive very nice cars. Their desire has not paralyzed them. Their desire has not turned into an idol. It's a desire. It didn't happen on the timetable that they thought it would happen. And so they have grieved that. They have mourned that. And then after they wrote that obituary and had that little funeral, they went to the Cayman Islands. <laughs> My guy went to go swim in the Indian Ocean. My girl put on a thong and went to Bermuda. My guy went to Switzerland and drank cocoa from a local Switzerland person. Because I don't know what they call this. The, the Switzerland people, the Swits, I don't know what they call them. So um, I know they're not the Swedes because that's the Swedish. So um, somebody in the chat, let me know what they call citizens of Switzerland because I need to know. My cosmopolitan self needs <laughs> to know. Um, uh, I, I hope that's encouraging Be because I, I feel like I feel like we, we have just the Swiss. Swiss. Oh, they just call them the Swiss. Swiss. Okay, thank you so much. I love I love the community. So, <laughs> see, that's what I love alive yeah, too. Yep. We can find out quick, right? <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I, I I I'm I'm an advocate for I'm an advocate for empowering people to find the purpose and plan for God's life, single or married, mm -hmm. or divorced. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? What 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 is God calling me to do now? And let me enjoy that. Let me thrive in that. And you can still have a longing for a partner, but not to the point of paralyzation. Mm. I'm not going to be paralyzed if I'm not married. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Long live Juliet. If she passed away, I'm going to roll on the floor. Uh, there's going to be sackcloth and ashes and somebody better check on me because I'm not going to be okay. And then because the God that has brought me through every season of my life is still faithful, then at some point I am going to be okay. And I'm going a, I'm to a shake the dust off my feet and I'm going to get up and I'm going to be who God called me to be. I ra I, I really want to be married to Juliet for the rest of my life and then die before she does because I can't imagine living without her. Um, I, I would I would hate a scenario by which I'm here and she's not because um, when, when I got married to Juliet, I didn't have a job or a car. So I know why. I know why she loves me. Um. And she's been with me through everything, so I know why she loves me. I just, at my life now, I wouldn't know why. And not that they couldn't get to know me and love me and all that kind of stuff. I just I just feel like, I think I'd probably have to, like, fly to Nigeria mm -hmm. and just walk around and probably take some applications from over there and just have, like, a reverse coming to America. I'd go back to <laughs> Africa, the land of my ancestors, and... And scoop up somebody from Nigeria or Ghana. I don't know. But it ain't going to happen because long live Juliet. <laughs> so I, I hope I even got close to answering that question for her. But yeah, the church has just done a bad job of of um, empowering singles to just be great at being single. Um, there's such a stigma around it. And 
uh, Jenna, Jenna Mountain and I talked about the idolization of marriage in mm-hmm. Christian culture. Um, we love the idea of marriage, but I, obviously nobody's doing good on after all these marriage conferences and everything. The, the divorce rate is still fifty percent. So I love the empowerment of marriages, but I, I think we just need to empower people. If we if we, if we empowered people, they would step into marriages empowered. Yeah. But if the only time we empowering people is after they get after they get married. It's, it's, it's kind of late. So that's my answer to that. Uh, so Joseph Thierry says, Uncle Tim, you're my uncle in my head. Uh, <laughs> my question is... I love you, Martina. Thank you for the g- donation. My question is, uh, how do I properly forgive and release someone the correct way without being angry or bitter? Or how do I correct the bitterness in my heart? It's good. It's a good question. Okay. Let me let me let me get you a voice. Joseph? Joseph. Okay. Joseph, un momento por favor. Uh, uh I need to pull up this verse. There it is. So Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 15. 12, 15. Okay. Hebrews 12, 15. All right, Joseph. This is for you. Work at living, this is Hebrews chapter number 12, starting at the 14th verse. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. So I want to read that again. Look at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. So I think it's important when you've been a, when you've been a, offended by somebody or somebody has hurt you, um, the forgiveness starts from the inside and goes out. Okay? Forgiveness is from the inside out. You 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 don't what what you're offering the person in in the form of forgiveness is something that's already been worked out in your soul. So this is an inside out act. You cannot forgive a person with your mouth and you haven't forgiven them in your heart. That ain't how this works. You literally have to go from the inside out and when you go from the inside and you work it outwardly it's it's peaceful there's no drama but remember what the writer of hebrews said you have to pay attention to make sure no poisonous root (laughs) gets down in your soul which means this is a heart inspection and an inward inward inspection and reflection of how you are feeling about the situation that has happened with you One of the best quotes I've ever heard on bitterness is bitterness is a poison that you drink and expect the other person to die from. That's bitterness. I drink poison and expect you to die. And you just living your life and I'm sitting over there shaking, losing consciousness. Like, (laughs) so we don't want to, we, we, we don't want to hold on to any root of bitterness. So, um, Thank you, Holy Spirit. But here's what's important, Joseph. You cannot lie about what happened to you. Most people wind up bitter when they're not able to express the true experience they had with the individual that hurt them. And this usually happens uh, when you try to honor somebody and not be honest. 
well, it wasn't that bad. And I know they hurt me, but the Lord still loves them. And I just forgive them with the love of the Lord. I still love them. Nah, be mad for a second. <laughs> that dumb mother. You know what I'm saying? That old beep, 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 Right? Morris code. Some some of these niggas gotta be Morris coded. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just I'm just telling you what I know, man. I'm telling you what I know. Like you you get off your chest what you need to get off your chest. Like be be mad. Like if they offended you, offenses if they disrespected you, that's that's a devaluation of self. You should be mad about that. Don't don't let that slide and just throw Jesus glitter, glitter on it. Feel the emotion. And after you feel the emotion, toss it. <laughs> toss it. I got it out. I got it out. I needed to say, oh, I feel so much better. I'm not going to do this to this person. I'm not going to say this to this person. But child, I need I needed to I just needed somebody to contain me. I needed somebody to just offer me some containment so I could just kind of verbally vomit get this all out and now i can forgive them i hate they did it but i forget i forgive them now was, was you about to say something hector i just wanted to share something that's uh correlating to what you've said in the past about burning bridges anytime i've had a struggle with somebody that i had a struggle with them i don't think i've ever had any bridges burned because i was willing to talk to them that's exactly right I was willing to have the conversation and it's so awkward at first. Yeah, 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 yeah. And your body's yeah. reacting. All the nerves are yes. going crazy. Yes. But afterward, it's sweet relief for both. And then most of the time, yep. you love each other even more. Oh, absolutely. I, I I have I have very few. There's very few people I've ever interacted with in my life that I don't talk to no more at all. Mm -hmm. All the people that I don't talk to anymore are people that cannot admit that they wronged themselves, God, or others. I can't fool that person. Anybody else? We good. Hey, you, you pissed me off over here. We need to have a conversation. All right, cool. We're, we're better now. Oh, I didn't, see, I, didn't, I didn't see it that way. I didn't, you know what? When I heard it, I took it this way. Now that I got more information, my bad. I, I might have been tripping, right? Might have been a... Um, I might have I might have been on the borderline of being a hypoglycemic that day. You know, my blood sugar was low. And so and so my bad. I didn't I didn't get all that info. That's cool. But yeah, not confronting people or situations, you're just setting yourself up for bondage. And it's not a good look. It's not a good look at all. So my encouragement is to uh when when you have the ability, have the courageous conversations. When you don't, Forgive them genuinely from the inside out, but not at the dismissal of the experience that you had with him. Do not put Jesus glitter over the situation or them. People are resilient. People, people need to grow up and be adults. People can handle the truth. People can handle a confrontation. People can handle boundaries. People can handle your no. If the violation or the infraction has been that bad and you don't need to have them in your life anymore, They'll understand it. And if they don't understand it, that's their growth work, not yours. I hope that helps. <laughs> so uh, Carla says, what is something that you're learning about yourself right now open to Tim and God's kids to answer? Um, so everyone, go ahead and put your answers in the chat right now. <laughs> uh, what is something I'm learning right now? Um learning about yourself right now oh wow this i'm the wrong person to ask that question to <laughs> or the right person depending on what i'm learning about myself right now is that uh i am changing my assignment is changing i have to look through different lenses right now I've been a, I've been preaching for 27 years and since I'll just count after uh my season as a lead pastor was over from 
January 1st of this year, I've talked sitting down more than I've preached standing up. That's never happened in 27 years. Um, so I'm changing. My cadence and rhythm to life is changing. My assignment is changing. Um, and when, in many ways, who I've been called to reach is changing. There's two scriptures. Who, who was this person again? Carla. Carla. Thank you for asking your question, Carla. I love you. So there's two passages, Carla, that are that are really, um, I'm really dancing with these two right now. And uh, one is in Matthew 22. And I think the other one is in Luke. I think the other one is Luke. Is it Luke? Oh, Timmy Ross. Is it? Uh, it? It is Luke. Oh, 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 wait a minute. It's 13. I know it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I think it's 13. I thought it was 13. Uh, I'll, I'll get it to you in a minute. Oh, it's Luke 14. I was close. <laughs> I was close. All right, so I'm going to read you these two because this is what's guiding me right now. Okay, so uh, Carla, this is uh, Matthew 22. And then I'm, I'm, I'm going to read um, Luke 14. So Matthew 22, starting from the first verse, uh, Jesus also told them other parables. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them the feast has been prepared. The bulls and fatted cattle have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But the guests he invited ignored them and went out there and went their own way. One to his farm, another to his business. Others seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. The king was furious. And he sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. And he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now, go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike. And the banquet hall was filled with guests. That's on my, that's, 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 uh, that's dancing in my soul right now, Carla. Here's the other one. It's very similar, but, but a little bit different. And I, so I'm going to read it. Um, a man prepared, this is uh, Luke chapter number 14, starting at the 16th verse. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I now have a wife, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will be will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. So, Carla, um, here's why these two have been these two passages have been really eating at me as I'm changing. I feel like my assignment's changing. I feel like the audience I'm called to talk to is changing because preaching to people and talking to people are two different things. And um, he, here's where it differs for me personally. For, for 27 years, I've been preaching in churches and I've seen thousands of people give their lives to Jesus and thousands more grow in their relationship with God. That's the way his ministry has always worked through me. Um, it's been more 
discipleship oriented than even evangelistic. But I have seen thousands of people come to Jesus and thousands more be discipled and raised up. I've loved every bit of it. It has been amazing. And now I feel like he's saying, I need you to hit the streets. I need you to go into the alleys and the street corners and behind the hedges and um uh so i've been saying this over and over again to myself i'm called to the highways the byways the bushes and the shrubs the highways the byways the bushes and shrubs the highways and byways the bushes and shrubs the highways and byways the bushes and shrubs the highways and byways the bushes and shrubs and then i'm gonna show you uh the picture that i got in my head if y'all can see this Can y'all see that? Is that showing up? Well, it's, it's a, we got a delay, so hold on. Okay. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we can see it. Pull it closer to your face, and it'll come out clear. Yeah. So y'all see? Mm -hmm. Y'all can see that one clearly. Mm -hmm. a All right. Better. Okay. That's Homer. <laughs> <laughs> That's Homer Simpson with his eyes wide open. With his eyes wide open, backing up into the shrubs. And every time I read this. Highways, byways, bushes, shrubs. Highways, byways, bushes, shrubs. And the Holy Spirit reminds me of this meme. And so I pull up the meme. And I, as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, that's who I'm going after. I was like, that's who I'm going after. I'm going after Homer. Fading back into the bushes. And the Holy Spirit said, that's absolutely who you're going after. He said, you know who else was hiding in the bushes, don't you? I said, sir, don't do this. I said, sir, stop. Playing. Don't do this. And he was like, Adam and Eve. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So when the Holy Spirit gave me the word to get as many people to the basement as you can, I'm calling good and bad alike. I don't care what you've been into. I don't care what you're currently doing. I don't care why you're even here. Highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs. First 27 years was churches and, and I still love preaching in churches. I just don't do it as frequently as I did, you know, for half of my life. And, and so I'm, I'm making the adjustment. You, you know what I mean? The way you talk to people is different the way that, than the way you preach to people. Um, and you talk to people in certain locales different than you talk to other people in different locales and locations. And so, um, yeah, there's your answer to that question, Carla. So uh, Emily says, hi, Basement Crew. My 16-year-old uh, brother and I love your show. I'm wondering what you have to say to the Christian who's been longing to speak in tongues for years, but mm. hasn't been able to. Oh, that's so sweet. Longing to and haven't been able to. Uh, the way I was taught was that it is a gift. And it's a free gift and it's a gift that Abba wants everybody to have. Uh, and... Being taught that, I know several people that have never prayed in a prayer language yep. and love God and um, have a longing for that. And so um, I first want to commend that your longing hasn't waned. You know what I mean? Because I gave up after like three months. I think it was like three or four months. I was like, I don't even want it. <laughs> I was in Pentecostal churches. Thank you, Jesus. 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 And it wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. Does this mean that a lot of people fake it? They do. Because there's pressure. Right? Yes. And 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 so I love that. What's her name again? 
Emily. I love that. I love you, Emily, for saying that it's been a longing and I still don't have it yet because she ain't faking it. Right? She's not trying to fake it till she makes it. She's not over here saying Scooby Dooby Dooby Doo for real fast. She coming in a Honda. 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 She coming in a Honda, right? Um, e. coli virus. E. coli virus. E. coli virus. E. coli virus. <laughs> Roku TV. Roku TV. Roku TV. Roku TV. Roku TV. Roku TV. Right? She ain't doing none of that. She's longing. She's waiting. There is something to be said about delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long you've been waiting, but don't give it up. Mm -hmm. yep. I just would not give up on it. Because I remember I got to this point of frustration where I said, I don't even want to speak in tongues no more. Mm -hmm. And a few months later, at 2.22 a.m. on a Tuesday, you cannot make that up. I was talking to the Lord. I was praying, and I remember thanking him. And I'm a very literal person and pragmatic. I think some people have heard me pray before. I'm not the type of person that's going to father God, God to death, like he don't know he's father God, right? And so I'm thanking him for this, and 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 I'm thanking him for this. And um, I just remember running out of things to say, to thank him for. And I got ready to open my mouth to say something else. And this beautiful language literally just spilled out of my mouth. And it had syllables and syntax and structure. And I was like, in my mind, I'm going, this is not me. There is no way I could make this up. And uh, I've been able to pray in that language uh, ever since. It's beautiful, too. I love it. Um, so don't give up on that desire. Don't give up on that longing. And in those private moments, now I will tell you this, that this is, this is from some old Pentecostal evangelistic women. This is my disclaimer, but I'm going I'm to tell you what they said, because I, there's something to it. They would they would tell everybody that was that wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is your mouth, but it is his language. Mm -hmm. Open up your mouth and let him speak. That was always so beautiful to me. It was like this partnership. Like you weren't going to get zapped and like your eyes were going to roll in the back of your head. And, um, mm -hmm. I didn't have to go into a, like the worship has to be high and the, Work, music and and there, there must already be a charged atmosphere and uh, it's my mouth it's his language i open up my mouth and i allow him to speak do i know what i just said i have no idea <laughs> the spirit knows it's god's holy spirit communicating with god it's beautiful and I'm a, I'm unashamed of it. I love it, um, but it doesn't. You, it ain't deep. It don't have to be deep. Can you bring clarity to those in the chat who don't know what that is? What 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 speaking in tongues is? Oh, speaking in tongues. It's a prayer language. It's it's a it's a language, a spiritual language that God gives. Um, Paul talks about it. I'll read a little bit about it. And there, there's some people that don't believe it. Some people believe what I just said was gibberish. Mm -hmm. That's on them. Uh, Paul says this in uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter number 14. My eyes just dropped here. I could read the whole thing. Uh, but I just want to know. <laughs> this is so funny. 
Uh, Paul writes in verse number 18, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. (laughs) (laughs) No chill. (laughs) Oh, Paul. Why are you so loud, bro? There probably wasn't room to fluff it up, though. He's like, this is what it is. I'm better. (laughs) I'm built different. Mm. Paul was like, Oh, when it comes to speaking in tongues, I am him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that cracks. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. <laughs> but in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 words in an unknown language. Mm. Um, let me drop down to uh, verse number 22. So you see that speaking in tongues is a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is for the benefit of believers, not unbelievers. I love it. Oh, man, there's just so much there. So if you want to know, if you know what speaking in tongues is, it's an unknown language, unknown to you, unknown to other uh any other man it's it's a, it's i believe the language that god gives that he can only understand spoken by the holy spirit on the inside of you to the heart of god um now you've probably seen it sensationalized you've probably seen it um uh caricaturized um uh there you know, there's been a lot of people that make fun of it, that joke about it, um, but it's a real language. There's actually a, um, let me see if I can pull it up. It should still be up. And if it is, it would be awesome. Let me see. Let's see. I'm going to type this in and if it works, then yay. If it doesn't, Yep. All right, so there's a there's a um is this it? Yep. Yep, okay. So there's a there's a um a link you can put ABC News report on speaking in tongues. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful um clip. I just Googled it. So if you put ABC News report on speaking in tongues, it's so dope. What they did is they took some people that spoke in tongues and they put them in uh, uh, the machine like a CAT scan. Yeah. And they analyzed their brain wow. waves while they spoke in their uh, uh, language of origin. Yeah. And then them speaking in tongues. Wow. The center that controls speech when they spoke in their language of origin was lit up. When they spoke in tongues, the, the 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 center that controls speech did not light up. Wow, dude! And so the doctor that did the test on several people, uh. not just one, several people that spoke in tongues concluded, "I ain't saying it's real. I ain't saying it's not." He was like quick to be like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm telling you is the data. the data says that what lights up is the amygdala. Wow, not the center that controls speech. Mm. And it's it's his it's his language, so he can he can he can pull it up at will. Wow, dude! And that's beautiful. You cold? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It is all good. So uh, Annie says, "What do you recommend for a person who feels as though there is no one who would understand our, no one who would understand about their addiction, or no one to confide in at all? Does that mean I'm doomed?" You're not doomed, Danny. And the reason why I know you're not doomed is because you just told us. You have a community. You have support. It may not be tangible. It may not be the closest proximity. Um, but God's never going to leave you alone. Like, first of all, he promises he'll never leave you or forsake you. 
Um, he goes on to say, lo, I will be with you even to the end of the age. You're never going to be forsaken. You're never going to be abandoned by God. And he's never going to leave you without people to help you through any season of your life. Um, I lament with you that you feel lonely. Uh, I lament with you that it feels hopeless. And I'm here to reassure you that it's not. You are going to get through this season. You are not just going to survive. You are going to live. And you will not simply live. You will thrive. In Jesus' name. So this is a season of your life. This is not the standard of your life. You are going to get through this, Annie. And we are here with you. Following that, uh, James says, I'm 28, in recovery from sexual addiction, picking up the pieces from the damage it caused and still trying to figure out what my calling is. Any advice? Keep doing the work. Point blank, period. Keep on doing the work. Um, you are uh, a hero. You are incredibly brave. And um, you are doing what you need to do right now. You are, you are, Danny, you are setting up the future you by the work you're doing right now. James. Oh, I'm sorry, James. Yep. Where did I get Danny from? Annie was the first one, so oh, oh, maybe. Man. And I don't know what I did. James, James, you, you, are, you, are, you are setting up your future self by the work that you're doing right now. Whatever damage you've caused, uh, that's not what you're going to be known by. The work and recovery that you're doing right now is going to set up the future James to prosper in a way that the former James could have never done. People that do their own soul's work from the inside out, they built different. Mm -hmm. They are built different because it takes bravery to go into your own soul. It don't take no bravery to go into nobody else's story. <laughs> right? Back in the days when I was growing up, you know, we were watching documentaries about people's life. VH1 driven. You know what I mean? V you, you know, where are they now? And and it don't it don't take nothing to go investigate somebody else's life. It takes hard, brave work to go into yours. So uh, keep doing your work. Give a lot of grace to yourself as you're walking through this recovery. Uh, it takes time to change, but make no excuses for yourself. Stay accountable. Keep the lights on. And future James thanks you. It's good. Um, this is, uh, I believe it's Asaya. Any advice for someone who has decided to no longer uh, have premarital sex and is in a relationship and their partner may not agree with their decision or support it fully? Yeah. Um, make, make your boundary. Asaya? Asaya, I believe that's, okay. that's her name. Yeah. Uh, make, make your boundary. If your partner doesn't agree with it, they have two options. They can agree to disagree and respect your boundary or they can disagree and leave. None of which concerns you. It impacts you. It doesn't concern you. At the end of the day, you have a boundary that you need to keep. This is not about the other person. It is not about what they feel. This is not about what they think. They don't have to like it. Perhaps you all engage in sexual activity and then you decided, you know what? We're not going to do that anymore. Well, Take it kind of as a compliment. They missed their cookies and milk, right? Maybe it was good. Perhaps it was delicious. Okay, great. Hope you hope you hope your memory serves you well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Have fond memories of what we used to have, but we ain't going back to that right now. So that's my that's my admonition. My admonition is, uh, do not allow this little friction to change your course. If you've made this decision, this person can either respect your boundary or they can move around. It's the only two recourses, only two options. And I apologize. She said that her, it's pronounced Asia. 
Asia. My bad. So that, no, that was my fault. Okay, no worries. Um, how do you differentiate between God and your feelings while dating? This is from Mark. How do you differentiate between God and your feelings? I need more. Yeah, if you can elaborate on that, Mark, that'd be great. Yeah, Mark, let us know. Um, Ask the question a different way if you can. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's sin is how you pronounce this one. Um, Tim, how do you know when it's time to leave a narcissistic house of worship? For background, a threat of everything falling apart if I left was given. It's hard to hear God through a filter of fear. Leave now. Read it again, because there's something in there that I want to, I'm going to stab it next time you say it. How do you know when it's time to leave a narcissistic house of worship? For background, a threat of everything falling apart if I left was given. It's hard to hear God through a filter of fear. Prove them wrong. Mm. Leave. Mm. Prove these niggas wrong, man. Mm Prove them wrong now. <laughs> N E O W. Right now. Mm-hmm. Prove them wrong. Leave. And when your life don't fall apart, then you tell me who was wrong. The devil is a liar. You ain't got to stay up in that house of fear. God is not giving you a, a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So leave. I can show you better than I can tell you. Chunking these deuces. Y'all ain't about to sit up here and have me right now. <laughs> and it's Monday. You got a six day head start, baby. <laughs> Leave now. <laughs> ain't nobody going to die because I left your church. Mm-hmm. My life is going to. My life will only be wrecked. No, let me, let me, let, let me slow down. I could wreck my life by bad decisions and the consequences thereof. I can't tell you how many times over 27 years I've walked away from God in my heart. And he didn't as much as thump me. The disconnection was enough. The disconnection was enough to make me go, I don't need to be doing this anymore. But he's never threatened me. If you leave, I'll curse your whole life. He's never threatened me like that. So if God ain't going to do that, why would the... This church is mm-mm, leave now. That's a narcissist for sure. Yeah. They can't leave. You ain't gonna be able to leave live without me. I bet you I can. Mm-hmm. Watch me. Watch me do it. Watch me do it. Watch me do it. Watch me do it. A year. This this yeah. Do this now. That way in a year, when you when you're prospering even more than you have been because you're un un from out from under the cloud of a narcissistic leader. Child, please lead him now. There's nothing. And there's who is this again? Who, what's her name or his name? Um, let me find it again. Cause I feel this strong. Who that? It is. I believe it's pronounced sin. C I N. Okay, sin. Let me tell you something. I need you to leave now, and there's nothing to pray about. Mm-hmm. That's a spirit of saw that's on your pastor. Mm. You ain't got to pray to leave a spirit of saw. You just you just run. Mm. <laughs> so. So I personally can't recommend this movie, but there's a new movie that just came out um, called Renfield. And it's probably one of the most accurate pictures of a narcissistic system. And mm. it's brilliantly done because mm. it's, if you know who Renfield is, 
he is like Dracula's go to guy to like you go get me my my victims. Mm. And so the whole movie is painted in this uh where Renfield's at like an AA meeting or where they're talking about toxic relationships and like <laughs> it is hilarious. It's extremely gory, which is why I can't recommend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but in Nick Cage plays Dracula and it's perfect. <laughs> but it, it is the whole movie is about a narcissistic system. And it's just brilliantly done. Um, and I watched it the other night. And so like that minute that came back and it's just like, you got to get out because it's killing you. It's killing you. Like he's just feeding off of you. Wow. And so I, yeah, um, that was for free. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So no, yeah, I believe this person's name is Kayoma. And they say, am I too young for therapy? If not, how do I convince my parents to let me go to therapy? They do not like outsiders, people that are not related by blood, knowing family issues or drama. Oh, that's a. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm so. Does she give her age? Um, no. No age yet. Yeah. Um. There, there is no age limit on therapy. Fifteen. She says she's fifteen. Okay, fifteen. Sweet. Um, no, absolutely. You can go uh, to therapy. Uh, th therapists are professionals who, by an oath, uh, same as medical doctors, cannot divulge any information from your sessions. Um, it is unfortunate. And I'm so heart heartbroken to hear that you are in a family dynamic um, that kind of uh, enables dysfunction through appearance, right? Let's, let's control image, let's control optics, everything's okay, let's not act like anything's wrong. That's a, it's a pretty bad, uh, that's a pretty bad situation to be in. So I apologize that you are in that type of situation. Um, my advice to you is uh, to, you're going to have to phrase it in a way, you know your parents better than uh, anybody. You, you would have to phrase it in a way um, that m makes it, appealing to them and i would say that would have to you would have to make it more about you than maybe it even really is and you're not lying um you're you you just know how to get the right response from your parents if they are people that care about image and so if you make it about um your mental health and your desire to grow and maybe even I might want to even be a psychologist one day I don't know uh, but you may have to get creative in how you make this request and 15 is not too young um, Hannah says Tim I just lost my job and I'm trusting in God's plan but how do I deal with the emotions that come with it feeling like a failure and not sure what I'm doing with my life. I'm 27 and feel so behind. One more time. Tim, I just lost my job and trusting in God's plan, but how do I deal with the emotions that come with it? Feeling like a failure and not sure what I'm doing with my life. I'm 27 and I feel so behind. Understood. Understood. Loads of empathy for First of all, losing your job, that's devastating. <laughs> to be 27 and trying to figure out your life, that's already an issue. To lose your job on top of it, dang. Yeah. You know, that hurts. I get it. Um, and uh, I would also say that um, you're 27. And there is so much more ahead than behind. It doesn't feel like this right now. I always like to calibrate that because some people, I'm not, dis I'm not dismissing the experience you're having right now. I'm just telling you as someone who's 21 years ahead of you. <laughs> you who just telling you as somebody that's 21 years ahead of you, um, you won't even be concerned with this in five years 
But for right now, this is how you're going to get through this. Okay, boo? Here's what we go to. First of all, you are going to address the way you feel about everything in your life at 27. You're going to do it now. Not like right this minute, but like today. <laughs> I'm illiterate, so let me rephrase that. Today, I want you to just address everything that you feel. Like, 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 like it, if you're, I just lost my job and I feel like everything I'm trying to do, I'm trying to live for the Lord. But nothing's going my way. I need, girl, I need that. Was that a girl? That was, yes. Her okay. name was Hannah. Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> um, 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 uh, I, I need you to get all that out. And, and, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You need to verbalize it. You need to verbalize it. Hannah, I've never met you before. But I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you that you internalize a lot. And you need to verbalize. And and you don't even need to do it with another person. You you've you've edited your prayers for too long, Hannah. Mm -hmm. You even try to curate the prayers. And I'm telling you, he doesn't need you to do that anymore. He already knows what you're thinking, sweetheart. So just say it. <laughs> just say it. I, I've, I, I hope this resonates with you, sweetheart. I feel like what the Lord is saying to you as his daughter is, I've been longing to hear a messy prayer from you. That's what I feel like he's saying. I've been longing to hear a messy prayer from you that is unedited, completely improvised, spontaneous. I just want to hear from you. And so I need you to get all that up and out of you. Everything, whatever you feel about God too. I promise you, you won't, whatever you say today, you won't feel like none of this in five years. You may not feel like none of this in five months, but whatever is true today, be true to what it is today. How you feel today. Give us this day our daily bread. So get that up and out. Um, and understand that you're going through a season. And there is a reason for this season. There's something to learn in this season. So don't despise it, even though it's uncomfortable. Don't despise it. I hope that helps. Uh, I'm going to call this person Formula because that's the first part of the name. How do you grow in a situation where your parents aren't really practicing Christians and I've been trying to grow in my relationship with Christ and all my mentors are busy? Have at it. Get up in this book, fam. <laughs> Load up on some podcasts. Watch some documentaries. Go invade Billy Graham's library. Mm -hmm. Like, go in, fam. Like, honestly, get a shovel and start digging. And I promise you, you're going to hit a super well. This is one of those seasons for you. What was this person's name? Uh, it's like Formula Fyin, F-I-Y-I-N. I don't think it's a name. Formula. It's just, yeah. yeah, whatever. Formula, you are in a season right now where you might be having the, gr the biggest growth spurt you've ever had, and it's going to be in the dark. Mm. It will not be publicized. God wants to do something in you and through you that you could never do for yourself or by yourself. And the only way that's going to happen is for you to eat this book. All your mentors are busy. Load up the podcast. Get the shovel and start digging. Read some books. Read some. Listen to some audio books. There is just no excuse at any season of our lives not to be able to grow. There's been seasons of my life where I didn't have access to the mentors uh, that I could sit down with and ask questions to. And so 
listen, I got masterclass loaded up on my on, on on my TV and I can sit up here and and have Steven Spielberg teach me how to do film. I don't, I'm never going to do a film, but I might be inspired by something your boy says, right? If you got five and a half hours of content and I done paid a dollar, $169 for the year, you're going to tell me something, right? And so uh, uh, I listened to uh, uh, Nas... Nas had a he's the first rapper to have a have a master class um and and it was on storytelling through hip hop that 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 rap I wrote for season 6 it was inspired by what I watched with Nas I watched that like last year hmm. but I started I started writing my rhymes a new way once I saw the way he was putting his rhyme schemes together I was like oh okay I could do that I started practicing it then I'm like oh shared it with Juliet she was like oh yeah, yeah you could do this so you can be inspired by a lot of people and you never have to meet them. Uh, you're in a season where you don't have access to those people personally, close proximity. So now we're going to get it digitally. This is one of the things I love about this generation is how much access you have. Back in my day, which Lord have mercy, I can't believe I'm even saying a back in my day situation. This is so dumb. <laughs> back in my day, man, it was cassette tapes. Cassette tapes and big bulky VHS tapes. Now you can Google somebody's name and get to and get to downloading all the wisdom they they've ever had. So um, get your shovel and dig, homie. You'll be better because of it. Daryl asks, uh, "What's the best way to discover why I struggle with vulnerability and allowing someone?" to dig into who I really am without guarding myself, i.e. wife, family, friends, kids? Because you're scared. That's why. Yeah. If you want to identify you're scared, you're scared of being rejected. You have a fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And it's quite normal. You're normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> Vulnerability is scary. Because it's like it's like handing somebody an egg mm -hmm. and then begging them not to break it, right? Yeah. Hear me, not begging them not to drop it. Yeah. You can break an egg if you apply too much pressure in your own hand. So, so we don't think about the sensitivity and the fragility of vulnerability when it's given out. Which is why you have to be so careful with people because they, they're they giving you something very, very precious and it can be very, very easily broken. It can be very, very easily cracked. What, what was this person's name again? Uh, Daryl. Daryl. Thank you so much, Daryl, for your vulnerability. I like. I appreciate your vulnerability even to ask that question. Uh, Daryl, what, what my suggestion would be, before you share it with family and friends, set up a, 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 a counseling session with someone, a therapy session, and wordsmith it. Like, start doing the work on, on your own with somebody that you know is never going to tell you a business, right? Um. Uh, and that can handle what you have to say. Then you can, from there, you can begin to word, uh, not word, you can begin, yeah, yeah, word. You can begin to wordsmith it. You can begin to like, here's how I'm going to share it with my wife. Here's how I'm going to share it with my kids. Here's how I'm going to share it with my parents. Here's going to share it with my siblings. Like you can start kind of workshopping like, you, you know, here's a, here are the narratives of my life that I want to share with my family but I want to be able to say it in a way where I'm empowered and they can receive it and they're not going to crack my eggs. So that's my, that's what I got to say about it. Uh, Raven asks, how come your feelings are ignored when it comes to your relationship with God? How come your feelings are, are ignored? ignored by who Raven? Like who's ignoring your feelings? Like I just need more. Yeah. If she if she kind of follows up with that, cool. But I I don't I don't know who's ignoring the feelings. Yeah. 
Uh, Caitlin asks, how do you move forward when you know God is calling you, but your natural response is to hide? Do it scared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just do it scared. My natural tendency is to hide. I'm an introvert. Why the hell am I even on this live pod with y'all? Because he told me to. <laughs> yep. This is my third pod for the day, fam. Ain't got to be here. <laughs> Hector is ready to get in the bed. Hector got on a blanket already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sleepy vibes over here. Yeah, no. Hector is Hector's under the weather, so he's thugging out on this on this third one. You know what I'm saying? But like, yo, we we do what we do because we're called to do it. You know what I'm saying? And so, I I just I just I understand your sentiment, and I understand how you feel, like. But when you when you hear the call, girl, answer it. Answer the call. But I don't want to do it. Do it anyway. I don't have the resources. Do it broke. I don't have the bravery. Do it scared. I don't have the height. Do it short. <laughs> oh, just do it. Just do it. You're going to have to Nike your way through this thing, homie. But I'm the wrong person to ask this question and think you're going to get some, you know, some like sympathy music to play. I empathize with you, but I don't sympathize. No, you got If I got to do me, you got to do yours. If I got to embrace my call, you got to embrace your call. And you're going to have to do it whether wh whether you like it or not. And you're going to have to do it whether people agree with it or not. And uh, you may be uh celebrated for it you may be criticized for it but if you know god told you to do it let god be true and every man a liar you know what i'm saying wisdom is proven to be right by its results sometimes you got to do some stuff and prove some stuff before people even applaud you for the stuff that you did so don't wait for nobody once you get god's permission start moving yay I like this one. EJ says, my 10-year-old son asks, how do you commit to doing or learning something? Oh, <laughs> how do you commit to doing or learning something? Well, um, whether you like what you are doing or need to learn or not, uh, it comes down to discipline. Like the bottom line, you, you need to have some discipline, right? Like, I hated math in high school, but I had to do it. And I only had to do it until I got out of it. And then I had a choice whether I was going to do it some more, right? Because everybody got choices after a certain period of time. And so, um, yeah, if you want to do something, you want to learn something, you need discipline. You're going to always suck when you first start doing something. Just don't even, don't get discouraged when you do something new and you suck at it. You're going to suck. How how are you going to learn if you don't come in with humility, right? Like only perfectionists get paralyzed by the fact that they don't have the capacity to do something good the first time. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm the type of person that's like, hey, I'm going to figure this out. Uh, in the fall or late fall, early winter, I'm spending a month in in South America. Right. I have I have I have a handful of these Spanish words. I can I can understand more than I can actually say. Well, that gap is going to be bridged when I'm totally immersed in everything I hear every day is in Espanol. So I look forward to it because I'm so excited um, to have the conversations and learn the language. But I'm going to go down there with my little two year old. You know, I have the equivalent of a two year old's Spanish. Right. I'm going to be down there with my little you know 103 words uh while i'm in south america like those in south america that come up to america mm -hmm. and they're just good morning or you know what i mean trying to pick up the language and so um yeah whatever you don't know how to do prepare not to be good at it when you first start and then give yourself the discipline to grow in that in that new thing that you're trying to learn 10 years old 10 oh. years dude we got a 10-year-old dweller. 
Awesome. Uh, Catrice says, I'm in a relationship with a two-year-old and we live together with no sex, but we want to marry. How do I navigate in making our shacking up right in God's way and also not hindering my son emotionally? Can we go again uh, slower on this one? Yeah. And give me the name. Uh, Catrice. Catrice. Okay, let's go. So the first part's a little, I'll, I'll, uh, I clean up a little bit, I guess. She has a two-year-old son, and Got she's it. in a relationship, and they're living together. Got it. They are not having sex, but they want to marry. How do they negotiate, or how do they navigate in making our shacking up right in God's way, and also not hindering my son emotionally? Oh, go to the justice of peace. What the problem is? What the problem is? Go straight to the justice of the peace. You can have a marriage event later. Go get your license now. (laughs) What the problem is? You got a two-year-old son. Y'all live together. It sounds like there's no denying that that they want to get married. Okay, get married. If you're talking about, oh, we can't afford a wedding right now. The wedding is an event. (laughs) Your marriage and your wedding do not need to coincide. You have a two-year-old. Cool. Let that, let your son understand that I have a mommy and a daddy. I have a nuclear family that is stable and loves each other. Kids, no. Even intrinsically, they know when they're in a stable environment. They know when they're in a safe environment. So provide that for them. Provide that for your son. But if you want to get, but if you're living together and and the, the goal is marriage, but maybe like, oh, we, we, we can't do a wedding yet and this, that, and the other, you, you don't need to. What's up, baby? Okay. Um, uh, uh, I love you. Your day's good? Okay, baby. Um, I love you, kid. So uh, uh, the, the marriage and the wedding are not the same thing. Mm-hmm. So go get married. Go to the justice of peace. Get married. Let's get married. Get married. Um, Hope and Health says, how do you respond to your husband when he confesses a soul tie with another woman? He wanted to be vulnerable and asked me, to monitor his phone to help with his soul tie. Okay. Good. Right? I, I I applaud the man that was vulnerable enough to admit it. To also get help. Like it's accountability, right? Monitor the phone. But then he has work to do. Because this ain't your work. Because it's not your tie. So he has work to do. And it's not just a monitoring of the phone. <laughs> right? There's some heart. There was, there, there's, there's, a, there's something in his heart that is not fulfilled, satisfied, repaired that allowed this, the emotional soul tie to take place to begin with. And so monitoring the phone is good. Now we just need this man to tell us what the course of action for his heart is. That's what we need to know. How did you let this in? Right? And then what are you going to do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Because it ain't just the phone. Right, uh, something happened in his heart. I remember, I'll never forget. I was married to Juliet for like twenty four months, and this girl said I was dating her for twenty four months. Well, that's not that's not going to work, right? That math don't math. I've been married for twenty four months, and I've been dating another woman for twenty four months. Well, here was the truth: I had such low self esteem. She was a beautiful woman. And I gave her so much attention. She interpreted it as dating. Now, we didn't go out. 
But like at church, I, I spent an inordinate amount of time in this girl's face while she's batting her little pretty eyes. And the insecurity in me could not hold the beauty and attention that I was getting from Juliet. I felt good that I was getting it from somebody else along with my wife. And it led to her interpreting all of that energy I was giving her as a relationship. That's on me. <laughs> she misinterpreted the, the relationship. I'm the one that gave her the misinterpretation. So I had to change because this was my issue. This wasn't Juliet. Well, Juliet, from now on, when we go to church, make sure I'm not sitting by nobody. I'm not turning my wife into McGruff the crime dog. <laughs> I've never said that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that tickled me. <laughs> oh, child, I need to leave. Okay. We're going to have to wrap this live. <laughs> I got to steward Hector's life better. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, 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 again, I, the first step your boy made is good. Yeah. But this is his issue and he needs to address it. You can monitor his phone, but you cannot monitor his life. He got to do his work. Yeah. The end. Well, we have had uh, over a thousand people in our chat today. Boy, stop. I, I think it capped out around like 1,070. So? And I, I, that's, I'm celebrating. <laughs> I am celebrating that. No, Sammy's gloating. <laughs> no, we, no. Had, we had an over under. We didn't hit my floor though, so I didn't win. <laughs> you, you thought it was gonna be four thousand people? No. Oh, floor, floor. Huh? We didn't hit my floor. Like, oh, you, oh, like your floor. I, oh, yeah. okay, got you. Yeah. I thought I thought it was about to be three hundred of y'all in. <laughs> no, it tells you what I know. Up. Yeah. No. And so, how has this been like for you? Like, do you want more lives? Like, how are you feeling? I love lives. Part? They're so good, dude. I love lives. Like lives. Yeah. Cause this is what I love doing. Like this is, y'all. Y'all gotta under. Hey, dude. I'm trying to. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to help. That's all I'm out here trying to do. I'm trying to put people out on game, man. Like I'm. This is what I've been doing my whole life. I've been, my whole life. Even before I gave my life to Jesus, I've been holding space for people to talk my whole life. Yeah. I had so many girlfriends when I was a a a, a teenager. Yeah. Beautiful girls. I. Not girlfriends or right, hookups right, or whatever. Right. Just beautiful girl. But but I always listened. My homeboys, they like they was always like, hey dog, I'm telling you, I ain't telling nobody else, nigga. You better not tell nobody, nigga. Mm. I'll punch you in the face. But this was going on. Like, you know what I mean? So I've always held space for people and and then and once I gave my life to Jesus, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 20 years old. And I literally, I, I know this is like an old man thing. People are like, I'm nobody. <laughs> Who's thinking that at 20 years old? Yeah. I couldn't wait to get old enough to help people. Wow. Like, I was like, I can't wait till like I'm an old person. Yeah. And when you're 20, you, I don't know what old is relative. <laughs> but I, I do remember thinking like, I can't wait till I'm older to where I can turn around and help people. And like, they'll listen to me. Wow. I want them to listen to me because I want to I wanna help them get somewhere like faster than me. Wow, dude. That's the way I've always thought. Yeah. So, so um, to be able to jump on a live and like answer people's questions real time and yeah. just calibrate them and 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 kind of move the needle along and you know and maybe th th sometimes I misdiagnose it. You know, sometimes I can answer something and they're like, yeah, nah, Tim, he didn't hit on that one. Like, that's not what I needed. Or yeah, I ain't, I'm doing the opposite of that one. I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't feeling it. But I, I, I genuinely love doing this. I genuinely believe in people. I genuinely believe people can change. There, there, there are some people out there, unfortunately, that write off humans mm -hmm. and actually feel like they cannot change. Like, uh, no, no, people can't change. And I got empirical data and I got the science to back it up. People cannot change. And I'm like, oh, Bible says differently. <laughs> you know what I mean? My life says differently. So... Um, I'm, I just want to help. I just want to help. So I love doing lives and lives are the best. And <laughs> to have a thousand people on a, um, on a live that we didn't even promote. Exactly. It's kind of sweet. 
Exactly. It's kind of sweet. And you specifically said like, hey, let's not put out a post. Let's not promote this one. You just wanted to turn the cameras on and go live and surprise everyone. You want to talk about like, what was your, what was your heart in that? Yeah, I, I just, I just wanted to, um, you know, just do something organic, you know, and just, just pop up and whoever was around again, I, I, I assume people got lives and, you know, doing stuff. And so, um, I don't know what people are doing. And, and so I just, just, yeah, let's just get out here and, and see what people are doing. But I, I love a Monday live. Like there's just something about Mondays. All right. So let me set up the week for y'all. Y'all ready for the week? Y'all ready for the week? Y'all ready for the week? Are y'all ready for the week? <laughs> All right. So let me set up the week for y'all. So, uh, cause remember like this live is, I remember, remember when we used to do one episode a week? Yes, sir. And we would do a live. Way back when. Yeah. Way back when. <laughs> you remember sometime last year when we, <laughs> when we were doing one episode a week. So, so here's the thing. We were doing one episode a week and we would do a live and then the dweller community would get pissed yes. that the live was the episode for the week. Yep. Like they literally thought if we, if you give us a live, you still owe us a recorded one. <laughs> yeah. It's like, y'all are so greedy. Oh, <laughs> what? It's greedy. Yo, here's what I want to let you know. This live does not replace anything else. Mm -mm. We have a great pod tomorrow, and I cannot wait for y'all to hear it. My friend, the one, the only, Charlotte Gamble is going to be my guest Tuesday, 9 p.m. Central Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Oh, no, 6 p.m. No, no, 9. 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then whatever your international times are, <laughs> govern yourself accordingly. I know it's early in the morning for South Africa. There's somebody from South Africa that I see when I watch the replays. Yeah. And they're always like, uh, fam, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> Jesus must be Lord of my life. I went to the restroom and then caught the basement. <laughs> um, but you don't want to miss this episode with Charlotte Gamble. Charlotte Gamble is one of the most... Uh, brilliant communicators, uh, apostolic strategist, um, just anointed people that I've ever known. And uh, she's my sister and I love her. And uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be good. So we're going to hear from her tomorrow. And then we got a solo pod um, from the archives. Like it's something mm -hmm. that has been unreleased. And, um, but there's, there's so much wisdom in it and I cannot wait for y'all to hear it. So the week is shaping up to be really, really good y'all. And so to my, to my Tuesday night crew, we will see you tomorrow night and to that Thursday afternoon crew, 12 PM central standard time, 1 PM Eastern standard time and 10 AM Pacific standard time. I I appreciate y'all coming through for them solo dolos and, and for being in the chat. Now, let me reiterate. <laughs> Tuesday is a premiere. It's not live. Facts. Live means live. Premiere means it's a premiere of a pre-recorded. Are we, are y'all, <laughs> is there any... Live means live. <laughs> premiere means it's not live because yes. it's called a premiere. It's like when you go to the movie premiere of Guardians of the Galaxy. It's not a live show with Chris Pratt live on the screen. Yep. <laughs> okay. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of this. And don't forget Wednesday or Thursday. Sorry. I just said Thursday. Miami. <gasps> oh, we're going to be in Miami. We're going to be in Miami. Dude. Yo, we're going to be in Miami. Y'all pull up. Y'all pull up. <laughs> if if you can't get to the Basement Live episode, it's all good. It's all good. Pull up anyway. Pull up anyway. And um, now I think the room we're in is like glass. I believe so. So maybe we can do like a. Good morning, America vibes. Yeah, like good morning, America. <laughs> and we can have people with like basements. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, mom, I made it. <laughs> Nose is pressed against the window. Open, 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 open. Nah, it, I can't wait to see y'all in Miami. Uh, the weather's gonna be dope. Um, it's gonna be good vibes. It's gonna be good chill vibes, and so uh, I'm gonna have on some good deodorant. And uh, we're, we're interviewing Dwayne Johnson. It's gonna be great. Don't, <laughs> don't make these people have seizures and then wind up disappointed. He won't be there. Dwayne Rock could be in Miami. He won't be sitting down with me. I couldn't hold that. I couldn't keep that to myself if that was happening. Because I would love to see Dwayne Johnson in the basement. That would be amazing. Big facts. Big facts. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Thank you for allowing us to invade your Monday. And, uh, oh, yeah, Kendra, you right, $800 on site. Yeah, but only once, though. I can't be looking at 500 people that are going to basement merch and everybody expecting to get $800. Well, remember, well, this is a church event, so it's $500 if it's a church event. If we just see you on the street, maybe in Miami, it could be $800 right there. But, um, uh, <laughs> I'm about to sign off and I see this from Kamala. How you how you submit the questions though? <laughs> we about to leave. Te amo mucho. Te amo mucho. Um todos todos la gente? The people? To all of the people? Como se dice? You trying to say you love everybody? Yeah. Yo quiero todos. Yo quiero, yo quiero todos. Yo quiero todos. Yo quiero todos. Yo quiero me, todos. Me amo a todos. Me amo a todos. No, just amo. Amo. Mm -hmm. Oh, me amo a todos. Me, me amo a todos. Me amo a todos. Oh, I love you guys so much. Y'all are amazing. Thank you for watching from Jamaica. Damel, thank you guys so much. Um, los quiero. A todos. Thank you, Kendra. I love you. Te amo. Um, Faisal, I love you, man. Afonso, I love you. Lacey, Lakita. I feel like I'm doing um, a romper room. Yeah. Where you, where, nobody, you have to be old, as old as me. Anybody in the chat remember romper room? Just say yes. Please, somebody be as old as I am and remember <laughs> Romper Room. Please don't let me be the last person live that knows Romper Room. Mm -hmm. Jonathan from Denmark. I love you, man. Thank you, Terrilyn Tucker. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, there's some people. Joanna, Randy, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so glad somebody else remembers Romper Room. Lord have mercy. You were waiting for a minute. I was, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Cause somebody in here like what? <laughs> what is romper room? Google it. Google it. Kiva, you fifty. Let's go. I'm I'm down with it. I love being y'all's uncle. Love being y'all's uncle. I love y'all so much. You have no idea how much I love y'all. So um anyway, I'm gonna come to Ghana. I promise you, I am. I saw earlier London wants us to pull through. I'm going to pull up in London as well. London says, when y'all getting here? Hey, I have a famous person from England that's going to be on the pod. Mm -hmm. I just can't tell you who it is yet. It's Dwayne Johnson. No. <laughs> oh, somebody had a super chat that didn't get answered? Uh-oh. I'm fired. I need to put in my resignation. Sorry. What was the super chat? I don't see it. I don't see it. It might have been like way back in the beginning. Oh, I'm so sorry. When you got a thousand people in a chat. It's hard to keep up. It is hard to keep up. So if we didn't. Uh, Just blame it on me. That's all right. I'll take it. <laughs> Bro, you act like we could we, we could answer a thousand questions. That that would be. We, we would not. I, I can be better, Tim. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dork. All right. I love y'all. Hey. Um. Is the is the London person Lewis Hamilton? That would be dope. And no, <laughs> I'm not. But I don't want y'all to guess. So I'm about to I'm about to sign off because somebody <laughs> down to have some word knowledge and then wind up being is it this person? And I'm like, Ooh, go. bye. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of people in 
want to know. So, uh, it's Big Ben. Somebody asked, are we going back to the Google Docs soon? Absolutely. We have not for, forgot about those Google Docs. Mm-hmm. Um, we just we just realized that this is a marathon and not a sprint, and uh, we got time. We got time. So we just going to keep it moving and get to as many people as we can. Okay. I love you guys. And we got to go. Until next time. Peace.